Hello, my name is Simone Castello and I'm going to talk to you about integrated digital communication for the small business. I'm based in Cambridge, so this talk will have a UK perspective. However, I learn everything I know from US newsletters, specifically Search Engine Watch and Social Media Examiner. I do recommend this newsletter to update your knowledge in digital marketing topics. If you want a free course in digital marketing, I recommend Google Garage. There are free courses and very manageable courses. Let's move on to the slide number one. To follow my talk, you'll have to download the slides from the link I provided in this post. So what I called holistic digital marketing is a kind of virtual circle where every element of your marketing is connected. So we start with the website, which is the shop front of your business. You need a website to show your trustworthy and the website is very important if you are selling a product but it is also useful if you are selling a service because you can have white papers and examples of your work um, case studies testimonials all information that can help a customer to make a decision to buy from you. I linked the website to the email newsletters. Um, this is a way to reach your customers and it works really well if you provide useful information. So it, you cannot be too uh, pushy or just have a sales newsletter. You need to offer useful information. Um, for instance, home based is a good gardening newsletter and they they will tell you in which month um, you need to do certain jobs and what can you do in July and what products you may need to do these jobs. This helps you to make a decision in terms of maybe buying a new mower, you know, if you, your mower is not doing the job anymore. Um, going to Continuing on the circle, we are going clockwise. We have social media. Social media is a, pla is a platform for you to uh, spread your marketing message, uh, engage with your customers, perhaps get ideas from, poten from potential customers if you're developing a product. And I won't go in details into social media, but I recommend you use channels that are suitable for your business. If you're doing B2C, business to consumer, you may want to prioritize channels like Facebook, Twitter, maybe Pinterest or Instagram, YouTube. If you're doing business, uh, to business or B2B, you may want to add LinkedIn to the mix and any other channel you think your customers are having conversation on. It's, social media is about humans having conversations. So it is a very useful tool, especially if you want to launch a new product because you can find a conversation um, and you can do some competitor analysis and gain information that can help you to develop a strong marketing proposal. So continuing on the circle we are SEO. SEO, Search Engine Optimization. There is a technical side to it. I won't cover this. I do organic SEO, although I sometimes do some paid 
social media activities, but they are limited and mostly related to events. Most of the time I do content marketing, so I produce articles for the news section of a website or I produce a blog. So here we go on the blog. The blog is another element of your digital marketing strategy. You can have it on your own website or you can host it on another platform if you can't. Blog Blogging is still a valid strategy. You just need to create fresh content to keep it alive. By content I mean videos, articles, podcasts, in, with infographics, illustrations, photos. It is not just about words. Do you remember the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, not sure how much more a video is worth, but it does make a big difference. I will talk about about this later and by providing some case studies for you to uh, understand the impact a blog can have. Continuing on slides number three, if we can't cover, we have a case study, first case study, which is about holiday rentals. I've masked some parts of this photographs because I don't want to give the company away to respect client confidentiality but this was an interesting sort of challenge an SEO challenge um, the aim was to reduce the PPC spend PPC uh, paper clip and it's a form of uh, paid digital marketing and it can be quite expensive if you are in a competitive business like travel. So we, this was done gradually. So it's not we. It didn't. The owner didn't switch off PPC, which gradually lowered the budget for it. While we explored organic alternatives to the PPC. So one thing. I was keen to do was to rewrite the website so it would follow SEO rules and make it really informative because that, that is what Google wants. Uh, keyword stuffing is an old strategy that doesn't work anymore or if it does it might work for a bit but it will backfire. It also shows you're not up to date with uh, SEO and how it evolved, uh, you're not up to date with what Google wants. It doesn't really reflect well in a business because keyword stuffing um, usually means really short the copy, uh, full of keywords, and it doesn't look professional. So, in this particular SEO challenge, I looked at competitor analysis and keyword search. So looking what the competitor does is useful, even if it's a bigger company, because you can understand how they are reaching out or engaging with a customer and scale down so it fits your business. This saves a lot of research and a lot of mistakes because you can see what is what works and what can be improved because even a big company might not be able to do all the digital marketing element properly say they don't have a very good blog and so this could be your competitive advantage have a really good blog about your product so this was my uh, recommendation to have a blog the blog was not hosted on the website because it was not possible. So the blog was created in WordPress. And the blog included articles and it had a soft sell approach. By soft sell I mean the article is informative. In this case the articles were sort of, um, how can I explain it? Um, 
tools, um, like a day in Florence or three days in Tuscany. So we had these sort of tools, self-guided tools, you can call them, uh, devised. Um, and then at the end of the article, you would have um, a few photos of uh, villas available to rent in the near, in the vicinity of, of the cities. And then the, the blog was amplified by the use of social media. So we use Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. Another approach uh, we took in this particular challenge was to use analytics. We used channel analytics and we also used Google Analytics. We wanted to know if our organic approach and our use of social media was bringing people to the website. This is what Paperclip was doing, attracting people's attention and bringing to the website. The problem was that if the person didn't purchase, it was a very expensive strategy to have. And sometimes in a luxury market, people like to browse and make decision maybe in the long term because it is such a big investment. These are not cheap villa rentals. So it could be something somebody is planning to save up for. So PPC doesn't really make sense in this term. Moving on to the next slide, we have a different case studies. We have a walking up and also another study concerning an English language school. So with the walking up, we have a we had a different sort of setup because the owners were quite digital savvy. What they needed, they needed um, blog content, and they soon realized that they wanted business to business content and business to consumer content. So, for instance, you could have a blog post about a lovely walk in the countryside with interesting pubs and you could have a business to business content article about visitors um, experience, our tourist boards dealing with visitor experience, what are the strategies they are using. And so this so the last article, the latter article, was addressed to uh, tourist offices, which could be um, business partners with this company. Um, with the language school, it was another SEO challenge. Um, I was asked to rank with the words Stein at the UK University and you have here a screenshot of the company ranking with those keywords. So this is a natural uh, keyword strategy. Uh, it is actually a sentence, so it's starting a UK university and we ranked above an actual university. The idea was to um, advertise a foundation course that is equivalent to the first year university and this is for students who come from a foreign country and need some support because the, perhaps the um, school system is different so they don't find it easy to um, apply to a UK university. And another piece of content was very successful gaining 306 likes on Facebook in a very short time was an article about how to pass the IELTS exam. The IELTS exam is quite complex and is divided in different segments, writing and speaking, etc. And I wrote an article explaining how to pass the different segments of the exam and then I had a teacher to look over it to see if if 
it was correct and if they had any further recommendation. And then I finalized the article and put it in the blog and shared on Facebook. And this is like what you call addressing a pain point. Pain point in this case is the exam. So by giving top tips, you really engage with the audience. People will be interested in the tips, especially people who are doing an IELTS course. And you might attract people who are not on the course and may want to perhaps do the course to help them out. Um, next slide is about a research center and this is my current job. So the challenge here is to raise the profile of the center. So this is a research center within a big department and as it happens there may be a very small budget for doing marketing and with this particular university marketing has is decentralized in the sense that yes there is a centralized marketing department but they don't do departments they all depends the all uh, disciplines you know the all faculties they just do a generic one for the whole university so each department has its own marketing um, sort of team let's call it team it's not really department they have a marketing team and within a department there may be different um, centers and they need to have their own marketing team usually an individual um, because the budget stretches so far and with this particular challenge aside redesigning and rewriting the website because obviously in a small um, center research center you may not have updated the website for a while so you need to update the website rewrite um, and really work on the news page because this is how you keep a website fresh if you do not have capabilities for having a blog or time or people to write it it pays to work on the news page the news page can be the page where you can keep up your customer people your stakeholder interested in what you're doing it could be in this case a paper that was published a conference a video of a talk um, in in a sort of more in a manufacturing sort of contest it could be a product you've developed you could have somebody using the product like a video of somebody using the product um, you could create a whole series of posts um, the company that comes to mind is Blend Tech they do blenders that, that is not exciting um, for many people so what they did they had a channel on YouTube very early on and they started to blend unusual things like an iPhone um, a rake a gardening rake and then they start to ask people what they should blend next so it is quite interesting you know to see this a product that you will never think of putting into a blender being well blended and you know you can see even the smoke coming out of the blender but the blender is doing the job and it is creating a kind of buzz and I'm sure some of this video have gone viral so uh, I think the key is to find something that can bring awareness um, a buzz interest um, and you know that's why social media uh, it's very is crucial and so you find the channels where your audience is and sometimes it's not 
the channels you think are the right channel. For instance, in this research center, which is very niche kind of research, Facebook is doing very well, while LinkedIn is not delivering. And Twitter is doing very well, because Twitter is very good for news, and so it's very good for putting the link to our news page. So then you can go into Google Analytics and find out, like the same like in the example I had for the travel company, you can find out um, how many people came from Facebook, how many people came from Twitter, how many people came from LinkedIn. And you can really understand which channel is working and then try to fix the channels that are not working or decide that perhaps your audience is not there and you need to decrease your time on this channel. Still maintain a presence, but do not spend too much time on the channel. Another thing I'm planning to do is to do a print and broadcast media outreach. We are launching uh, a new research strand, a new product, if you like, and we would like to reach out to um, the press and Ever, and we are you know, planning a launch, so so again, you know, you can do traditional media. Um, many newspapers would have um, a website, so you can so to also target the digital um, version. And this would. We want really to start, say, a conversation, and this could spill over in social media uh, once we have some article. But also, it will provide us with backlinks, because that's why many people still do print and broadcast outreach, because they want a valuable link to put on their website, or they want a website, and they and they want the website to be on a authoritative, trustworthy website, because this will also help you to rank. So if there are people who specialize in creating backlinks, again, uh, you have to focus on quality. You don't want the link to your website on a poorly presented website. You want a trustworthy website that is visited by many people. And on that, in that respect, perhaps we could have another talk um, on this topic, because this is a job in itself. And moving on to the last bullet point of this slide, the analytics, I recommend using a platform um, to monitor the analytics overall. What I mean uh, is that LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, they have analytic platforms built in. But to have a good look overall, it's advisable to have another platform. I'm using Hootsuite because it offers a generous free account so I can have all the channels and I can get more numbers. Because another thing about um, social media analytic, um, sort of built-in analytics, is that they do not provide a, a whole picture. So I use Osweet to, me to measure engagement. And, you know, you can also, you can use these results and compare with what you're getting with Google Analytics. As I said, you can measure how many people came to the website from different channels. But obviously, you need to have a link to the website now and then. Do not expect people to go on your Twitter account and just visit and go and find out a website. You need to mention the website in, in your tweets now and then. Remember that people are lazy or time poor. Um, they have a short attention span, they don't want to do unnecessary work. 
So it's useful to always have a link to the website. And this is really um, easy if you update in your news page regularly. So you would have um, the news. We won this prize. Um, we published this new white paper, whatever is your newsworthy item. And then you put it on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, and you may want to customize the message because you, you shouldn't really have the same message copied and pasted on all the channels. You should customize it to the channel and the, the length that is recommended, like, like in, on LinkedIn, you can write a length, but not, you can't do that on Twitter. And you can take on Twitter, I recommend taking a few liberties that like you may want to omit articles if it still makes sense or maybe do some abbreviation because you're really pushed for characters despite the increase in character uh, sort of size. Um, so um, in, in the next slides, I'm looking at other digital strategy tools. So I mentioned link building and another way of creating links is also guest blogging. If you don't have the time to invest in a blog, you may want to write some articles and try to place them, not the same one, mind, um, on other blogs. You find out which are the blog influencer and you can do so with blog rankers like Cision, Technorati uh, and when you find out the influencer, you try to find somebody who is a good match for your product or service. And then you ask if you can post an article on the blog with a link to your website. And many of these bloggers are busy and they may well uh, welcome fresh content from somebody that has some sort of link to what they're talking about. Don't do a blanket email and sell it to a lot of bloggers and be respectful find out what the blogger is talking about and if it's a good match do send an inquiry and perhaps do not target bloggers at the same time you just find the, the one your number one send your inquiry and when he says no move on to the next one in the list so another tool is testimonials testimonials are sort of important um, because they show how your product is used. So no, no point saying, oh, your product is great, so I saw from Sheffield. Um, you have to actually have a good testimony that shows how your product can make a difference, can solve a problem for a customer. The more unusual, the better. Um, another sort of digital strategy tool is um, sourcing and providing Creative Commons images. What I mean by Creative Commons, these are images you are, that are free to share um, and they are copyright free. But be careful because some Creative Commons images cannot be used for commercial purposes. So when you do your search, only search for images that can be shared even commercially. There is an option in the advanced search for this. You may decide to, prov to provide them. Why not? If you have a lot of images, maybe it's even your product, but you think somebody else may want them, say, I don't know, a mobile phone or, um, or a bank building, why not? Um, somebody may want a picture of these items for a blog post or for the article. You may decide to release them through Creative Commons. And I recommend doing that so you can actually have a place where to store your pictures and also indicate what the restriction on news are. Are you happy for them to use for non-profits or for also for commercial outlets? And then if you re request a link, you will get a backlink uh, from whoever using your image. Obviously, if you're not happy about uh, the website 
that is used in your image, you can also request to take it, to take it down um, if you think the website is offensive or against your ethos. And then we have social media listening, um, which is looking at social media and finding a conversation. And this is used a lot by company wanting to launch a product, see what their conversation is about a certain product and see if people are, are asking for features that are not available in other products and then you can really use this information to launch your product um, and de well, develop your product, uh, highlight um, those particular needs and sort of create like a customer base that is engaged with your product. So moving on, community building by what I mean is like you could have a forum where people are using your products. Um, an example is Lego. They created a Facebook group where you can talk about Lego and how you use Lego. And there usually is a price. I don't know if it, if it is still running, but it is a good example. And there is a price for the best ideas. So people who look in us are incentivized. Or you can have a Twitter party and um, with a special hashtag and again offer a price for participating. Uh, you're trying to build a community that is engaged with your product or service. Um, or you can do a, f a forum on your website. It really depends um, you know, what your um, capabilities are and what your website can sustain. And last but not least, we got email marketing. Uh, email marketing is quite powerful. Um, the best way is to have uh, an embedded newsletter. So it's quite uh, visual. Uh, for big pictures, less copy, I will say. And you can have a call to action. Uh, so if people want to book something, pre-book, uh, if, if it's a product that has not been launched yet, you can try to generate some interest and be mindful of GDPR, the privacy law that were, um, that entered into um, for the force in April, 2000, sorry, May 2018. Um, be mindful, you need to ask people to opt in into, into your newsletter and if you already have a database, you need to make sure you have permission to email these people. You need to have a kind of physical proof. So the best way is to um, ask them to opt in uh, into your newsletter. I um, know it's a tedious job, but it is better to be safe than sorry, because the fines can be quite big. So you, if you use MailChimp, which has a free account, you can actually handle this. And so email all your contacts and ask them, do you want to keep hearing from us? And, you know, and, and put a link to unsubscribe. Or if you can't do that, I just ask them to email you with unsubscribe in the subject box, um, whatever works for you. It can be quite a job if your customer are not on, online. So if you have to send postcards for them to call you up if they still want to be in your database. So that is like printing and sending cost. So it, it, it could be expensive, but you still need to comply with legislation. So I put this image on this slide, which is Porter's Five Forces and from Wikipedia. And this is something to think about uh, when you are developing your strategies. Think about your competitors. Think about the threat of entering a market, the source of your products, the bargaining power of supplier. I'll just leave it there for you to think about. Um, I won't go into it. So, 
this is the last slide um, really because the next slide is just asking you if you have any questions and if you do you can leave your question um, in a box under this post and so if you want to really make sure your strategy is sustainable and will work in the long term you need really to research your audience and create personas and what I mean you need to imagine what your customer is like and what they will need from you creating a persona is a fun exercise and it makes you think about your customer and you can kind of be in their shoes and work out what they will want from your product and what they need the, the product to do. You may have different personas, especially if you're selling from a business to business and consumer. Um, to give you an example, I worked on a B2B and B2C uh, website and we had a section for medical practitioner and we had a section for the general public who will want to use this particular product and we would ask their doctor to recommend it. And this is this is about this was about um, um, implants um, and injection for uh, for wrinkle you know to stop minimize wrinkles on so it's not a medicine because you can't really recommend a medicine or a pharma product this, it doesn't work like that this is more for like um, um, say the beauty the beauty and industry um, say another example say you want to your hairdresser or beauty salon to use a particular product and you could um, ask for it and in some salon they would also sell the products to customers so again the product is sold to two different audiences and so there will be different persona there will be the business owner and then there will be the consumer so by they will want different things that's what I mean by creative persona because they have different needs and different requirements from the product different price points as well um, so play to your strengths what I mean is when you are uh, thinking of a campaign um, on social media try to use your what you use what you're good at but then I mean if you're a good writer do write if you're good on camera do have a video or a podcast if you a face for the for radio um, if you're good at drawing have a graphic an infographic if you're good face to face go to networking events although be careful there because hard sales approach is not welcome at many events it's just a quest it's just a question of going there and start to build relationships so when this person needs your service they may think of you or maybe a friend of them needs your service it happened to me a few times uh, when someone so a friend asked if they needed a copywriter and they met me and they recommended me um, sometimes it works sometimes it does not work but you know a recommendation from a trusted friend is worth much more than a review from a strangers on the internet um, so don't disregard face-to-face -face, um, marketing really um, and which you, you could I suppose networking is face-to-face -face marketing so um, and going 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 on so we need to measure ROI so ROI is return on investment so what is the return on investment you need to measure how much money you're spending um, because you may be doing paid advertising you and how many sales you're getting out of it you need to measure also how much time you are investing in a campaign and what is the results in terms of sales 
You do it at regular intervals. I recommend three, every three months, six months, to just have a look at what is going on. Um, if you're particularly impatient, you need, you need uh, like a one month to collect the data from the analytics. Um, some channels may let you collect data like for a week. It doesn't really, it's not worth it. I mean, just, I think you need at least a month or two or up to three, just really see if the strategy is working. And, and if it's not working, just change, as they say, pivot, change your course, change the tack. Um, and, you know, if something is working, do more of that. You know, um, for instance, we notice that videos, but that, I mean, it's, I suppose it's not a surprise, but videos like work really well for what we're doing. So we needed to sort of have more videos. So it, and it's quite an expensive thing to do, but you could perhaps if you haven't got much budget, you could maybe find a student in, in um, film school to help you out and pay the student, please don't destroy the student. And, or you can find somebody who's starting and needs to build a portfolio, but still please pay them. Don't just don't say, do it for exposure. Um, and this will work cheaper than hiring a professional. On the other hand, you can also ask a professional because maybe a professional can give you a discount if you want a simple video. Um, or you just have a go yourself. You know, mobile phones are very good nowadays. Uh, shoot a video. Um, you can find even software to edit your video and you have to invest a bit of time to learn how to use them. Um, and, you know, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm just very new. I'm very new to podcasting, so I'm still learning. And, you know, I just find free software and I'm trying to use what I have at hand. So I'm using a, an Olympus recorder while I'm waiting for my new microphone to be delivered. Um, and then, you know, I will convert the file into a suitable file. Um, I recommend Audacity, it's quite good for, for audio, um, it's a free software and I'm sure there is free software f for also creating your videos, there are quite a few, I used Wistia once, uh, spelled W-I-S-T-I-A, um, so you know, you do more of what works really. Um, and last but not least, keep up to date. So you have to do some training. And as I said at the beginning, you can read the newsletters and find out what the practitioner are doing. Or you can do these Google Garage courses. I think they are offered at different levels. Uh, so even if you're an expert or advanced in marketing, you can still learn something new there. Um, go to conferences, marketing conferences. Um, many are free. Um, Talk to people, um, go to networking event where they have good talks. We have lots in Cambridge. Um, just look in Meetup and you'll find, I'm sure you'll find a networking event where you can learn from your peers and, you know, and, the, and, you know, and have a nice chat with them face to face, escape the computer for a bit. Um, and I hope that you know, this has been helpful and hopefully I will create more of these and learn along the way. And this is totally unscripted. Uh, I didn't prepare a script, uh, but um, maybe silly, but that's how, that's how I am. I like to challenge myself. Um, do feel free to leave any question you have. I'll try to do my best uh, to answer the question and I hope uh, you got a few useful tips. So thank you very much for listening and goodbye.